Hi, this is Richard Roop, and this is the ultimate training webinar for this month. And this month, we're going to be covering how to make $72,000 buying a house for top dollar. We're going to be unlocking the secrets behind the free and clear real estate investing model. And on the line, I got with me Coach Mark Hoffman. How are you doing, Mark? Hey, Richard. How's it going? Hey, it's going good. How are you doing, buddy? Good, good. I was just playing around with the the technical things here, so I'm doing I'm doing great. Hey, I'm really excited about tonight's call. I'm super excited about the content. So, um, yeah, it's I've I've been actually waiting for this call for uh, for several days. So I'm really excited about what what you're about to present tonight. Okay, well let's get to it. <clears throat> All right. So sellers need help selling houses, don't they? Sure do. Okay, and uh, we can be their solution by buying it. But instead of trying to convince sellers to sell for less than market value, how many houses could you buy if you offered above market value? And then how can you make a great profit if you pay top dollar? And of course, that's exactly what we do with the ultimate strategy, the free and clear investing model, is we offer sellers top dollar for their house. We're going to explain uh, probably in, probably the best way I've ever done how that exactly works. The answer lies in your investing strategy. But your investing strategy is how you find the deal, how you fund it, and then how you flip it or make your profit. And this is a uh, buy and hold strategy. So one of, the way, one of the ways to generate huge profits per deal while offering sellers top dollar is by using the free and clear investing strategy. Now, I developed this back in uh, uh, 2007, 2008 as a main investing strategy after the housing and lending markets made their, uh, their collapse. You know, I think in 2007, we saw the mortgage market meltdown, and then in 2008, we saw the economy just kind of implode. And, uh, of course, uh, the market topped out in 2006. We've actually been using the strategy since 2003, but as a main investing strategy, we've been doing that since 2008. And it's proven to be a great approach ever since, regardless of what's going on in the economy. And, you know, Mark, I'm always looking for bright spots on the economy. Uh, I don't, I don't want to be dictated by the economy. Fortunately, this works in any type of economic situation. And for the next uh, number of years, I don't see any major changes, you know, positive things on the horizon. You know, there's, of course, there's, uh, you know, real estate's a local game, and you'll have hotter markets than other markets. But sellers, are, I think, are they're going to con continue to struggle selling their houses, and we can be their solution. Yeah, and some markets right now are reporting – <clears throat> minor, uh, you know, turnarounds. And, of course, the media is jumping all over that. But it's just really a matter of time for that to fizzle out, I think. I mean, there's just really, I don't, based on everything that you and I have talked about and we've presented on these calls, we don't have anything but, uh, I think, unfortunate economic news in front of us based on everything yeah, and, that, that, we, that we've got. Yeah, and the real estate markets are pretty much dictated by what's going on with the banks. And I think the banks are still having trouble, and I think they'll continue to have trouble. And that affects people's ability to borrow, and that affects people's ability to find a qualified buyer, and that affects their ability to sell their house. Uh, but since we don't rely on banks or qualified buyers um, with this strategy, we can do this anytime, and it's a, it's a great model. So the first step is how to find great free and clear deals. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're looking for sellers of free and clear homes. Now, a lot of people say there's not a lot of free and clear homes out there, but according to the latest uh, U.S. Census Bureau, over 30% of the properties in the United States are free and clear. And you know, uh, Mark, that we don't have any trouble finding a bunch of free and clear sellers. <laughs> we're working. <laughs> We're working with a lot of joint venture partners, and we're doing their marketing for them. And for most people that have us do their marketing, we flood them with more leads than they can handle. So they're out there. Now, 
right. uh, you can order a mailing list of, of homeowners based on a property type, loan to value, market value, zip codes, and owner type. So we use a list broker. I, I found a really good list broker, uh, and it's got a great database. And as far as property type, we, we select uh, a residential property. Uh, sometimes we eliminate condos. Sometimes we eliminate mobile homes. Um, but you can buy anything using this strategy. So you can uh, get a list by property type. And then loan to value, we'll talk about that. Market value, most of the lists that I pull are uh, above 100000 on up to um, 80 percent of the medium price range. So in a lot of markets that might be you know a hundred to four hundred thousand or something like that. And you can buy cheaper houses and we do. It's just uh, you can pull out more cash out of uh, uh, there's when there's more equity. When the house is worth more, you can actually put more cash in your pocket when you buy it. So we like to uh, target above a hundred thousand for that reason. But we I just did a uh, package deal mark on uh, four four houses, and three of them were worth about fifty thousand each, and then the other house was worth one hundred and fifty. Uh, and and we're probably going to make you know two hundred fifty thousand dollars on just those four properties. That's great, and those yeah. are cheap I, that's properties. Why I, I, yeah. I love that. I love the the economy, the scale that you get with uh, presenting to uh, out of area owners because they have uh, oftentimes they have multiple properties, and you present. To one, and you can sometimes get a package deal like that. That's great. Well, yeah. Let's talk about it. that. That that would be owner type, and uh, so uh, we, as far as loan to value, we'll talk about that. Market value, zip codes. You would select the zip codes on your mailing list for uh, where you want to uh, buy houses. Where what's going to be your farm area? And most people buy right where they live. And then owner type, and there are two tips, two types of owners we're going to talk about. Uh, then you can target these owners using direct mail, looking for sellers who are interested in getting top dollar, uh, selling quickly and easily, plus the benefits of avoiding all the typical costs and hassles of putting their property on the market through an agent. And uh, that's what we put in our marketing message. We talk about these benefits. Now think about it. Even folks with free and clear houses have to compete against the distressed properties being offered at a discount. So there's a lot of markets where there's a lot of distressed properties, and if you're a cash buyer, you can go out there and get a deep discount, and they have to compete with that. Not to mention the challenges of finding a qualified buyer uh, with today's stricter bank lending guidelines. There are two types of owners that we go after. Uh, one would be absentee owners who do not live in the property, and the other is primary owners. Now, we start with absentee owners. Now, absentee owners... We, we select 0 to 49 percent loan to value. So if you select 0 percent loan to value looking for free and clear houses, the, the list will be like, you know, it just doesn't work. Uh, so we go 0 to 49 percent absentee owners, and absentee owners tend to have a lot of free and clear houses, a lot of equity, and this has always been a good list, hasn't it? It's always been a good list for all types of investing strategies. Because just no matter what investing strategy you're, you're after, number one, you're looking for equity. Because uh, if you're going to buy it cheap, they need equity. Um, if, but if you have a free and clear, you can use this strategy. And then absentee owners, they tend to be a little bit more motivated sometimes and less emotionally attached to the house. And it's just a great market. And, you, and like you said, Mark, you'll get the bonus of finding retiring landlords with multiple free and clear properties. We find that all the time, don't we? Sure no. All right. Now, the list of primary owners is much bigger than the absentee owners, and we can narrow that down by loan to value. So we, instead of going 0 to 49%, we might select 0 to 15% or 0 to uh, 20%. Uh, because you only need, for a marketing campaign, about 6,000 potential leads, and that will, you know, if you mailed say a thousand postcards a month, that will last you for six months. And in most markets, there's more leads than you can go after than you need. And at the end, after six months, you can actually start repeating and, and hit the same people again. 
Now, I recommend starting with absentee owners who own the property in your preferred zip codes and then expand to primary owners. My best method for generating calls and emails from prospects is to send small, cheap postcards with my proven Magic Bullet postcard, my free and clear owner message. Now, once you create an account with a good mailing list provider, you can download a list and uh, mail a batch of postcards all online using click to mail in about 15 to 30 minutes. You can uh, get a batch of cards out, whether it's uh, 100 cards or 1,000 cards or 5,000 cards. Now, I've even ha hired a staff member. We have uh, Melinda on staff, and she does it for my deals because I, I buy and sell houses here in Colorado using this model. And then also my uh, clients. We have clients that sign up for our Done For You uh, postcard mailing service. And then all of my joint venture partners, uh, they mail postcards every single month, and then we work together on closing their deals. Now, the second step is how to raise cash for your free and clear deals. Okay. Now, with this strategy, you'll never have any of your money tied up in the property. We're going to fund each deal with a small private money first mortgage and then with a, and then a large owner carry back second. And in one of the recent FAQ calls that I did, Mark, we, uh, we covered, you know, how do you, work, how do you do this model if you don't have any private money? And I, and I laid out probably uh, six different methods to fund your deals. Um, if you don't have private money. But we'll teach you how to get private money. It's really simple when you see how the private money is used. It's not like you might, might have been used to using, uh, putting uh, maybe some private investors in more risky positions. This is a very safe, well-secured position for private money lenders, uh, private money partners. Now, every deal needs some cash, so we're going to raise this cash with the small private money first. Now, this amount will include any down payment we offer a seller in our deal structuring, any closing costs to, to buy it, any repair costs to fix it up if it needs work, and any holding costs. So all of the money that you need to buy a house, we're going to raise. And then it also includes the reimbursement of any money you might have spent mailing postcards or any money you spent prior to closing, like an appraisal or an inspection. And any, in fact, any money you spend on roof tools and support. So if you get my home study collection or you get involved with our coaching program, our JV program, or joint venture partners, um, if you use my tools, anything you invest in that, I would put that as an expense and go ahead and raise that back on your next deal. So then your next deal is actually free. <clears throat> so any money out of pocket. Now, that's not all. You also need some cash. I think there's a lot of people that need a bunch of cash in their pocket. And the best way to do that is to buy a house. <laughs> so we're always going to pull out extra cash at closing, usually ten to 20000 but I've, I've pulled out up to $81,000 the day I bought a house. Now, this is key since we want to be able to buy and hold, yet still we need some cash profits right now. So we're going to make some money over time, but we're going to make some money now, every month, and down the road. Now, consider, you can consider borrowing up to 50% of the value of the property for this first mortgage without any bank qualifying. And wouldn't this be a safe, well-secured note for a private lender? I mean, if you bo didn't borrow more than 50%, they have 50% of the value of equity above their position to protect them. It'd be very hard for anybody to get hurt in a first mortgage up to 50% loan to value. And most of the uh, private money firsts are at between 15 and 30% uh, loan to value. That's about the average, I would say. Now, uh, they have a first position with tons of equity to protect them. Now, if you make this opportunity of getting a nice return uh, on, the, uh, on, on these type of loans, and basically to let people know about this opportunity, you would – just flap your lips. You let people know that you buy and sell houses, and you'll let them uh, know that you pay a, a high rate of return. Now, there's a lot of people that would be happy with between 6 and 10% annual interest. Um, in fact, the 10-year uh, treasury notes right now are 1.15% interest. Now, someone will tie up their, their money for 10 years <laughs> for 1.15%. 
So if you offered them five or six or seven or eight percent, um, not only would it be a great opportunity for them, it almost sound too good to be true. But if they understand how it works, it makes sense. I offer eight percent, and I'm comfortable making this opportunity to anybody I know, my friends, my family, uh, my employees, uh, my, all my contacts. Uh, you want to flap your lips. So uh, if you don't have a private money program, we'll show you step by step how to put that together. But you got to have a good place to put their money, and this is how you're going to use it. Now, actually, you can offer any interest rate you want to a private lender because it doesn't cost you anything. Okay? When we do the deal structuring using my deal structuring software, the ultimate profit generator, it will back out all of the costs of your loan from your offer. So, note payments. Uh, that you pay to a seller are covered by the income or at no payments you pay to your private lender are covered by the income you collect on the property. And then the total cost of the loan is accounted for when we're determining the price that we're going to offer the seller. If you pay more to a lender, you'll simply offer less to the seller. So who actually pays for the private money? The seller. All right, so you can even pay hard money lender rates to capture a deal. You could pay 12 to 15 percent plus points if needed to get your deal uh, captured and 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 lock in uh, 72 thousand dollars in profits. But the more interest that that you pay, uh, the less you can offer the seller. Okay, your profit your profit goal on each deal is locked in. Okay, it's treated as an expense, just like anything else. Your profit is an expense, and so that's locked in. The higher your cost, the less you offer the seller. So you always lock in your profit. These first mortgages are so well secured that I've found money partners who will do them uh, nationwide for me and my joint venture partner clients. Okay, Even though they can't see the property or visit the property or inspect the property, uh, I have a money partner, and I'm lining up some other ones. i got money partners that will... Uh, do these deals because of uh, it's so, so well secured, and we simply provide them with a certified appraisal, and uh, we close with a nationwide title company to protect them. And uh, so we have uh, what you could call done for you private money. But there's other, but you know you can uh, you can also raise your your own. You could get started using ours, and then you could go raise your own. That's fine. Uh, we try and make it really simple for people to get started, get rolling. The lack of private money wouldn't shouldn't stop you because if you get a contract, all of your contracts, all of your offers are contingent on uh, funding. So you have nothing to risk by getting a contract. And then once you have a contract, boy, that is a motivator to go out and uh, flap your lips. Uh, but if you're uh, aligned with me, you know you could have me as a backup to fund your deals. But then you have the option of uh, bringing in other money to close the deal. Now, the third step in this process is how to get sellers to carry a note with little or no interest. Now, sellers agree to carry back a note because they love the price and the other benefits you can offer. Now, about one out of ten free and clear sellers will accept your offer because they understand it, they feel comfortable with it, and it works for them. Now, we found that with a lot of my joint venture partners, we're doing a lot of offers over the phone. And we don't have the same type of rapport building and communication as you do one-on-one. -on -one. So one-on-one, -on -one, it's about a one in ten is our goal. We want to close one out of ten. I'm finding that the, high, the, the numbers are a little higher, like one out of 12, one out of 15, if you're making uh, a lot of offers on the phone. But you do that. You, don't you have to do that, Mark, if, uh, if for example, they're, out of the, they're an absentee owner and they're, they're out of state? You've got to make offers on the phone, right? Sure do. Yep. Okay. Um, but whenever you have an opportunity, you want to go ahead and meet with, with sellers and see the house and uh, build a relationship, build rapport, build trust and rapport because you're going to ask them to finance you. Um, monthly payments on a seller's note are determined by the available cash flow from the property. Okay. Never buy a property with a negative cash flow. Okay. There's no reason. You can figure out the net cash flow. Uh, uh, and then make sure that the property can support it. So your net cash flow is the market rent, less expenses like taxes, insurance, 
HOA dues, and we use a fixed amount that we'll set aside from the income to cover future expenses like vacancies, repairs, and maintenance. So when we're structuring our offers, and if we offered the seller our net cash flow on their note, it covers all of our expenses, plus we get an extra 12 or 15 percent uh, additional that we can set aside for vacancies, repairs, and maintenance. So one of the pe reasons why people don't want to hold properties is because they know that down the road they may have some expenses. Well. We're going to borrow the money we need for all of our expenses, and then we're going to build a little uh, an account to take care of the house. So the house is going to take care of itself. Remember, you don't want any of your money put into a property now or in the future. It's just not necessary. Avoid the mistakes of seeding properties. I think we've all been there. <laughs> okay. Now, the only you only want to offer a seller a monthly payment that the property can afford. So again, we, we, we crunch these numbers, we figure out, okay, what's our net income, and that's the highest monthly payment you would offer a seller. And if they're going to let you keep all of the uh, monthly income, we can offer a little bit more for the house. I don't really care if I'm paying down the, uh, the house or collecting the income. Um, we actually structure offers. I've, I've created this software so that you are, your profits actually go up. If you gave all this, the net cash flow to the seller, you make the highest profit. If you get to collect your money every month, you know, three, four hundred dollars every month, then uh, you get that benefit, and we can actually uh, make a little less profit uh, on the deal. Uh, so I don't care if I'm collecting extra income or it's a break even, because if it's a break even, I'm going to have a higher profit. Now, ask sellers to take the lowest possible interest rate on their note. This reduces our expenses and therefore increases our offer price. Now, we can demonstrate to a seller that they will pay less in income taxes by taking a higher price and a lower interest versus a lower price and higher interest. Because we always go in with little or no interest, and they say, I want higher interest. And I say, well, if I pay higher interest, uh, the price will come down. But, by the way, it's better for you to get a higher price than um, higher interest. And in the ultimate profit generator, there's a tab called taxes. And once you structure a deal, it'll spit out a little sales presentation in print, is what I call it, a little sheet that demonstrates and shows them on this deal, here's what I can pay at this low interest rate. And if I paid you more interest, here's your lower price, and here's the fact that you're actually going to pay higher taxes. And the reason for that is interest income is normally taxed at ordinary income, and gains are taxed at the gain rate. So a primary owner, typically no taxes on their gain, typically. Uh, uh, absentee owner or investment property, they're going to pay like maybe 15% capital gains, but 25% on ordinary income, on their interest. So they pay more taxes on the interest income. So keep the interest low and keep the price high. It's better for them and... It doesn't matter to you because we've locked in our profit. You know, so if a seller wants higher interest, I say no problem. But you're going to pay more in taxes, and you're going to get a lower price. And they can decide what they want to do. I I think it's better for them to go with the lowest rate. The IRS actually publishes rates every month. They're called the applicable federal rate, and this is the minimum interest that the IRS wants the seller to charge you on on a real estate note. They, they want to tax them on interest, okay? Now, uh, you can use this as a minimum. I use that as a minimum interest if I'm paying interest. Otherwise, I'm just going to make a principal-only uh, payments to the seller at 0% to give them the maximum price. But look, right now, the current rate on a nine-year note with the seller, the IRS wants the seller to charge 0.88% per year, not per month. Per year, so it's almost zero <laughs> percent. Now, by using this low rate, you will rapidly pay down the note principal each year, and uh, uh, it's going to be paid by the income from the property from your occupant. Okay. Uh, normally, there will be a balloon payment uh, to due to the seller on the maturity date. So, if we had a nine-year note, we would we would need to sell or refinance the property by the end of the term. So most of the deals that we're doing now 
I, I, I usually make nine and fifteen year offers. So here's 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 my highest price for for fifteen years, and here's a here's a lower price for only nine years. You know, we don't do this 30-year thing. You know, that's you know, we go short term, 15 or nine. <laughs> uh, but if they don't like, for some reason, they don't, they think the house is worth a lot more than we think it's worth, and we have to push the price even further. Then we'll go with the 20-year term. In fact, we just got a deal accepted yesterday, Mark, with a guy down in San Diego, and the first offer I, I made was 20 years. Before I even showed him what 15 and nine looked like, he said, "That looks great. I'll take it." And wow. so he he wanted he liked the idea of getting long term income that he can rely on. Okay, huh. so he's a younger guy. Uh, but Interesting. He, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a, it, and we always give the seller options. You know, would you rather have the highest <clears throat> the highest price or the most cash? Would you like the highest monthly payment or the mo most money down? So we kind of give them choices. The ultimate profit generator spits out, you know, typically four offers, and we just let them take a pick. That's how we negotiate. You want more money? Go longer term. You want more cash flow on the note? We'll accept less money down. Because remember, the more we give a seller down, the more we have to borrow on our private money first, and that increases the payment on the first, so it lowers the payment we can give to the seller. Um, now, of course, at the end of the term, you would refinance them. You could, uh, you know, you could uh, bring in some, you know, uh, some private money, refinance it that way. You could refinance it with a bank if you wanted to. You could sell it, but of course, you always have the option of asking the seller to extend their their note, and you can give them some incentives to do so. You could uh, give them a partial principal pay down. You can increase the interest. By that time, you've probably got um, more cash flow. See, we expect cash flow to remain flat for three to four years, and then we assume maybe a 3% appreciation in rents and, and property values after that. You can use whatever term you want, but currently we're using 48 months of no appreciation on rents or cash flow. But you know what? I think the demand for rentals is just going to continue to go up. And I think mm. rents are going to go up faster than that. But we like to be conservative. So if we if they do go up faster than that, then we just get some bonus profit. But at the end of, uh, you know, if you think about it, nine years from now, rents are probably going to be higher uh, than they are now. And that means you're going to have, uh, if you gave a, all the cash flow to the seller in a break-even property, um, then down the road you're going to have positive cash flow. And if you wanted to extend from the seller, you could you could maybe increase the payment on their, their note. Because they do have a balloon payment, but if they extend it, you're just continuing to knock down that property. Um, let's see. If you Now, you can also pay the seller sooner than the nine years if you sold or refinanced early, but they must agree to a discounted early payoff schedule up front to ensure we make our desired profit. So right now, that schedule comes right out of the Ultimate Profit Generator software, you structure your offer. It shows a schedule. says, look, I'm giving you a premium for going 15 years, but if I paid you off in 5 or 10, you know, or here's, here's the amount that you would agree to accept. Otherwise, you're going to agree to uh, move your note to another property and go the full, the full term. So they don't have to take a discount, but they got to either move their note. During, say, for example, it's a nine-year note. So if you sold before nine years, they would move the note to other property, or they would take the discount. So it's kind of up to them at that point. The discount that we need is determined by what's available on the back end. So we, can, we crunch all those numbers, and we know that money is available. We could give that much cash to the seller, and it's going to lock in our, our target profit. The fourth step is how to lock in your guaranteed profit. So your profit on a free and clear deal uh, equals the total you receive in cash now, that's the money we collect when we buy, that ten to twenty thousand dollars typically. Uh, the cash flow, so you're, if it's a break even, it would be the, uh, the increase in cash flow over time, or if you've built in some cash flow, it's your total cash flow for the term of the note. And then the cash later, that's your back end, that's the, uh, you know, you're paying down the mortgages, uh, properties may be appreciating in value over time. You build this equity later, 
and that's your back end. So you add that up, that's your, uh, that's your profit target. So you're always going to collect 10 to 20 or more when buying. That's your cash now. Then you add up all your total positive cash flow over the years, take into account the increases in market rent for your cash flow. Then you project what you can sell the property for at the uh, seller note maturity date, at the end of the note, taking into account some modest and conservative appreciation. We're using 3% appreciation after four years of none right now. Your back end profit or your cash later is the future resale price less your selling costs and your loan payoffs. That's, that's what you walk away. In fact, Mark, I sold a, I sold a property today. I got a check for $111,000. Awesome. Thank you very that's much. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> All right. So that's the back end. I've owned the property for four years. All right. So the to construct offers for a seller, you take your resale price and you subtract all your expected expenses, and that includes your, your buying expenses, your holding costs, your selling costs, and your profit. Remember, that's an expense. And this determines your maximum allowable offer with terms. Okay, so you're getting terms from the seller, and we call this a terms mail as opposed to a cash mail. So, rem so again, to construct offers for a seller, you take your resale price out in the future, you subtract all your expected expenses now and in the future, and including your profit target, and then that will determine the most you can pay the seller. Okay. And that's your terms mail. And so, again, there's a not, lot of numbers crunching in here, so we use uh, software to crunch those numbers. The fifth step is how to increase your income while reducing your expenses. Normally, you're going to occupy each property very quickly with a tenant, a tenant buyer, or a terms buyer. And these days, we're taking over a lot of existing tenants because we're buying from absentee owners and retiring landlords. Um, but we're going to want to convert that tenant maybe to a buyer and because the reason is uh, a tenant buyer will give you some money down, so that's some additional money down. They will give you money, extra money each month to build up equity in the property. They'll, they'll maintain the property with ownership mentality, and uh, I just love tenant buyers. Okay, So if I have tenants I'm taking over, I want to, hey, you want to buy the house? <laughs> you know, uh, If not, I, at the end of their lease, I can go ahead and market for a buyer and put a tenant buyer in there or a terms buyer. A terms buyer is someone who has a lot more money down and uh, is willing to buy with some owner financing. So I prefer dealing with buyers to avoid landlording hassles and expenses, uh, but I don't rely on my buyers to close. If they do, great. If they don't, great. <laughs> Recently, I just did a uh, frequently asked question uh, webinar. I'll give you guys access to that. Uh, these, these recently, we we've, we've answered some of the most common questions on this. And one of the questions is, you know, if um, you know what what if I can't what if I don't sell the property or how am I going to make my money? Uh, what if I have to sell it for less? Um, the whole the whole idea here is to be in control and to sleep good at night. And so we structure everything so we don't care if a buyer closes or not. In fact, we'd rather keep the property, okay? Now, what if they did buy? What if they cashed us out early? So I covered that on one of the webinars is what if you get, if you get sell it early, how do you make your profit? So I demonstrated that. Uh, it's all worked into the Ultimate Profit uh, software, you know, Ultimate Profit Generator software. There's a tab that's called Equity. And there's a tab that's called Cash Flow, and it shows you exactly how the deal goes and how you make your money. Um, now, most of my properties are occupied by tenant buyers. I manage about 45 properties now. I bought over 500, but I, I wish I kept them all, but I couldn't because I needed cash. You know, I used to buy houses and actually, feed, you know, put some money into them, and then I used to feed properties. That that's just not the way to do it today. So today, you can actually own unlimited properties if you have none of your money in the deal. It's just a matter of time and ability to uh, close deals. You know? So the only reason that you would need to sell is for the money. Really, ultimately, that's why people sell, because they, well, either they can't stand the property or they want the money. Yeah, there's, so two, as there's long two reasons. As you have yeah, there's two reasons. Clear it, clean up your portfolio and get rid of a 
crappy property, right? <laughs> yep. Or cash. You know, you're selling it for cash. Right. And if you can raise cash when you buy, why would you ever sell? And if it's and if you're making money every year that you own the property, and that's how we structure our offers, most of our offers were making five to ten thousand dollars every year that we hold the property. And it's basically a property that holds its own and takes care of itself. And we never have and, and we, we use a lot of good strategies uh to make sure that uh, it, take, it takes care of itself. And then, of course, I've also built in a lot of bonus profits that, uh, so actually the offers we do make, even though you're got me to show them here, they're real attractive. Uh, there's actually some built-in uh, profits in there, so if something went wrong, you'd still make money. Okay. Now, for my buyers, uh, my tenant buyers, they agree to buy the property at a future date and maintain the property themselves. I give them different credits, like rent credit and and a rent discount and stuff like that towards towards closing in exchange for keeping their agreements, paying on time and never calling me. All right. Now you can also uh, you can also offer no bank qualifying owner financing uh, to uh, a terms buyer, and you would you would use an installment land contract, an agreement for deed, an all inclusive deed of trust, or a wraparound mortgage. What you would be doing is you would give, be giving someone a loan, but you would continue to pay your private money first. You'd continue to pay your, your no interest, low interest, private money second, or a seller second. And then you can wrap that financing with some financing to your buyer. Now, you would do that uh, if they you know, protected you and, and it made sense. Otherwise, you'd just deal with tenant buyers or even tenants. Now, of course, we can just put tenants in the house and don't even offer to sell it to them. Uh, but in that case, you will have some of your traditional landlording um, work, you know. And so you could do the work; it's good pay. But you could, uh, I would prefer to hire hire someone else to do that, and that's exactly what I do. Um, <clears throat> now you can collect a good size down payment from a terms buyer and finance the rest, so you get more money down. Their loan wraps the underlying loans, and you can continue, you continue to pay on, so you can further reduce the management. Uh, create a spread on your interest or monthly payment. So a lot less management with the terms buyer, a wrap buyer. Step number six, how to make $8,000 every offer you make. So I love this, uh, Mark. I love this mindset, this reframe. Okay, We're talking about making $72,000 buying a house for more than mar higher than market price. Okay, And remember, we, talked, we said that maybe... Uh, one out of uh, ten might do it. Let's, I, you know what? This eight thousand is actually. Let's see what do we got here. This is actually one out of twelve, isn't it? Okay. Let's say let's say we weren't as good as me. We're as good as you. You you probably close one out of six, one out of eight, right, Mark? <laughs> What's your closing uh, person, rate? My num yeah, yeah, in person, my numbers are yeah closer to one in six, or one in seven. One in seven in person. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's say we're going to make seventy-two thousand on a deal, and we di let's divide it by twelve offers. So we're going to make twelve offers. That that would be six thousand. How? Why aren't these numbers working? <laughs> Eight thousand times ten. All right, one out of what is seventy-two divided by eight? Divided by eight. Nine. 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 Okay, so that'd be like one out of nine. All right. All right, so now, as you can see, there's a bunch of numbers in crunch, and of course, uh, using the strategy, so we use the ultimate profit generator software. I wouldn't do it any other way. I don't know how you could do it without using uh, a software like that to, to really uh, make it work. So what we do with that is we enter a few numbers, and it spits out multiple offers. So for example, on a nine-year note example, uh, assume we have a, a single-family home in Florida, and it needs 5,000 in work, and it's valued at 180,000 fixed up. Okay, market rent. Let's say it's 12.95, and we offer it to our uh, our buyer with flexible terms for 187.5. And typically, uh, a terms buyer, someone who wants some some flexible financing, either rent to own or owner financing, they'll pay a little premium on the house. 
because it's not about the it's not about the price. It's about you know getting the house, and you can get them the house. So uh, typically, I don't have any buyers trying to negotiate uh, the price unless they're trying to you know they can qualify for a loan and cash me out. Then I will I'll actually consider it. <laughs> but if I'm offering terms, uh, usually we're not talking about price. So we can get a little premium on the price, and sometimes a big premium. Um, we're going to target a total profit of seventy-two thousand, and that's going to include ten thousand in our pocket when we buy, and the rest over time with the cash flow and the cash later. Now, after sticking these into the so uh, software, the ultimate profit generator, uh, we can buy it as is. Now, remember, it needs five thousand in work, and then it's worth one eighty. Okay, we can buy it as is for two fourteen. We, that's what that's if we offer if we got no money down from the seller because they wanted the maximum income and the maximum price we can give them eight hundred dollars a month now if we gave them fifteen thousand down uh, now remember the no money down we're actually going to buy our uh, borrow our extra cash that we're putting in our pocket we're buy, borrowing our our buy and hold costs our repair costs any money that we need plus the down payment so we still need a small private money first if we borrowed an extra 15000 and gave it to the seller, uh, that would reduce the monthly income we could offer the seller to $700 a month. And the price would go down to 202 So instead of 214 we could still pay 202 And if we gave them $40,000 down, we could still pay 182 and $500 a month. Now remember, this, this house is worth 180 and It needs 5000 to fix it up and make it worth that. And Mark, you know they're going to net a lot less than that because of transaction costs. If they if they hire an agent and pay commissions, if the, the yep. buyers always want to negotiate price, um, they want the buyers want them to to fix up the house things they didn't plan on, right? Yep. And buyers closing costs and holding costs, utilities, taxes, insurance. So you, normally people net about. 80, 85, if they're lucky, 90 cents on the dollar. So 180 times 90 cents, that's if they got really lucky, is 162 minus the 5,000 that they had to spend out of pocket. So that's 157. We're offering 182 with 40,000 down and 500 a month on nine year note. Each offer gets the seller a quick sell. And that's what, that they like that. You know, we can close anytime they want. And they're getting well above what they might net down the road with an agent and with all the uncertainty. Um, now, we there's so many different benefits that we can offer with this strategy. Um, you want to communicate those benefits. So I've created these what I call sales presentation and print tools. It's so detailed. It, 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 it communicates everything that we normally would want to say when we're presenting offers and talking to a seller. Uh, we go ahead and put that in print. So after we've presented our offers, after we've asked to buy their house and told them what we could do, then we can, um, and then we told them all the benefits that we can offer, and we relate it to their situation. We can then hand them this information that comes out of the ultimate profit generator, and it re, re it says the same thing. Mark, there's a lot of times when you make an offer to a seller, uh, and they want to talk to their their son, their wife. Their CPA, their attorney, right? Yep, some so, higher authority. Some higher authority. Well, if you can, everything that you just told them for the past thirty minutes, <laughs> they're what? What are they going to do? They're going to walk over and 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 represent what you did? No, I don't think so. They're just going to look at the numbers. <laughs> so we have some tools. One says uh, one's called How It Works, and it's a one pager and. It uses some NLP and stuff in there. And the second one is uh, the nine benefits that we offer. And that's, that's we, we cover the top nine benefits in writing. Then once they have our numbers, we give them a couple other tools. One is how we construct our offers and the five benefits of seller financing. We never talk about seller financing until they're looking at our numbers. Because normally if you say, hey, I want to buy your house with seller financing, they'll say no because they just want cash. But when they look at these prices and these terms and it works for them, they do it. Not all the time, but one out of 10, one out of 12 times, right? All right, 
<clears throat> so we're going to get at least 72,000 profit from the cash now, cash flow, and cash later, no matter which of these offers they took. Our profit is locked in. So if on average, if you think if you take your profit and you divide it by the number of sellers you talk to, it's like getting $8,000 every time someone says no, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like 8,000 I mean how many if you knew you were going to get $8,000 for every appointment you went on, right? And they, these tend to, to sometimes take uh, you know, a second and third appointment. This isn't like normally a one shot, you know, close. These people move a little slower, but that's fine. So but every seller you make an offer to, uh, whether they say yes or no, you make $8,000. How many offers are you going to go out there and make? <laughs> <laughs> as many as I can. There you go. That's how it is. It's a numbers game. And when you understand that, you don't take, you know, some people, I talk to my partners and they've, they've made their third offer and they say, man, I haven't got a deal yet. And they've, they've made three offers, you know. And so it's the psychology. That psychology can work against you. If if Now, of course, we've had people uh, get their first deal on the first offer they made. But don't don't expect it. Expect one out of ten, one out of twelve, maybe even one out of fifteen when you're getting started. Okay. So go out there, make fifteen offers, you're gonna land a deal. Okay. Um, step number seven. This is a great strategy uh to add to your real estate business. Now there there are many good safe ways to make money in real estate, and this is just one of them. Uh, but it's the best. <laughs> and it's the only now we we, we teach our our, our clients, our coaching clients, our, our, our students, our members, my partners, we, we teach them how to be transaction engineers. So if you can't uh, get terms with the seller, we're going to make them a cash offer. But of course, we're going to we're going to offer them a low ball cash offer, <clears throat> you know, 50, 60 cents on the dollar, just like you should. All right. Now, they probably a lot of times they don't need to do that and they won't take that. And then great. And then we can, but that contrasts that low price, all cash, contrasts to our high price, with um, having them wait for some of their money. A lot of times, that contrast them pushes them towards the higher offers, because again, they like all the benefits and it works for them. Um, so we do make cash offers, and they do accept them. In fact, surprisingly, more often than I would expect, uh, is that people will take these low ball cash offers. So be, so you should be happy whether they take all cash or terms. Now, I, I prefer terms because then I can buy more houses with my private money. So I could buy three or four or five houses with, uh, you know, 100 grand, or I can buy one house with 100 grand all cash. So um, I prefer the terms because then I can buy more houses. I can, I don't have, a, I can stretch my private money. Um, but cash offer is going to have a great profit in it. And what we're doing now, we used to use a formula for cash offers. Ron LeGrand used to say 70 cents on the dollar minus repairs. Uh, we used to, uh, we changed it to 65 cents on the dollar minus repairs. And right now, we just let the ultimate profit generator uh, determine what's the available equity that we can raise based on a loan to value and what can the income, our net income support. So our cash offers are, continue, are are calculated based on the equity available that we can borrow against, uh, plus the income from the property that it can support. So it's a, it's usually actually less than the uh, formula offer. Plus we're going to put some extra cash in our pocket too. Um, so how many real estate investors uh, you know do you know who are targeting sellers using this approach? Uh, remember, 30% of the properties, over 30% of the properties, in the U.S are free and clear, and very few investors are targeting them. There's very little competition. Uh, like I said, these sellers have just as much trouble, you know, finding a qualified buyer as anybody else. There's a lot of opportunity, and uh, it's just a very, very safe, profitable model for you. It gets you everything you need, high profits per deal, uh, cash in your pocket uh, when you buy. That's, that's nice. You need cash. And then long-term wealth building, you know, cash flow and cash later. But you you, you got to get that cash now, so it's all worked in there. Now, if you want to learn more, you have a couple options. I told you about this uh, these frequently asked question webinars I'm doing. I'm doing right now. I'm doing them every week. 
Um, I answer the most commonly asked questions I get, and I de demonstrate more on how this strategy works. Uh, if you want to sign up free to join us for the upcoming webinars and to access a free library of replays on the sessions that we've already completed, some of the things we've already completed is, you know, how am I protected and make money if I pay more than market value? What if I pay top dollar for great financing and the market goes down? How do I know I'll make a profit if I sell early? How does it work without private money? Okay, and those are some of the ones we've already knocked out, and we have a list that we're working on that you, you Mark, and Keith, Coach Keith, and Coach Courtney, we all kind of put together a list of the most commonly asked questions we get, and we're knocking them out one by one. Plus, I'm creating little features and tools in the Ultimate Profit Generator to handle some of these things automatically for you, and so you can see uh, an answer to your question there. <clears throat> so there's, uh, there's both strategies, and tools around everything you could possibly. Mark, you've probably heard everything. You know all the reasons what hold people back from using this model, don't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've heard them. I'm sure I've, I'm sure I could rattle off a few. Maybe not all of them yeah. right off the top of my head. Yeah, well, a lot of it. I mean, as a coach, you see people uh, who have all the t tools, all the training, and then something's holding them back. So if yeah. you see. It could be a question that's unanswered in their mind, right? Um, mm -hmm. And yep. so if, if they don't have the confidence, basically some, some fear, uh, they may not get their marketing out, or they may not return the calls, or they, it, or they may not uh, go ahead and structure the offers or even make offers, okay, because something's holding them up. So as you know, everything we do is designed to get people through those normal humps, those normal challenges, those normal mental hang-ups that so it could you know that hold people back, and it is a growth process because most people are not used to making a quarter million dollars a year. <laughs> I mean, if you just did four free and clear deals, that's a quarter million dollars a year plus. Okay, if you just did four deals a year, one every quarter. In fact, with my joint venture partners, that's our goal. We it's a conservative goal. A lot of people have jobs and stuff. But if you dedicate a certain amount of time, you get the marketing out, you work the system, uh, you can, uh, in your very, very part time, you could uh, close four deals a year. And uh, if we made $72,000 uh, an, on an average uh, on each of those, that is $288,000. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, if you're not an Inner Circle member or above, uh, then you can submit the free registration form that you'll find on the link on the replay page for this webinar. So wherever, if you're watching, um, if you're on us with us live, we will post the replay on the link that you got to this uh, live webinar. And when we post the replay, we'll put a link where you can gain access to the uh, library and the live calls for these FAQ uh, sessions that we're doing because it's a great way to learn more. And uh, I would check out the ones we've already done and then join us for future ones. So that's free. Now, if you can't find a, a way to access that, just give uh, uh, Dina a shout. Uh, her email is Dina, D-E-E-N-A, at richardgroup.com. She's a program advisor, Dina, at richardgroup.com. You know, she'll get you signed up or uh, point you in the right direction. Um, that's one option. That's a free option to learn more. Because um, I know this is, we've covered a lot of ground, haven't we? <laughs> Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we sure have. Yeah, and Dina and Dina's real good about breaking it down and explaining things uh, to you. The model she's been around for a long time, so she's real good about that. Yeah, she'll uh, <clears throat> she'll be happy to talk to you about your uh, financial goals with real estate, and uh, <clears throat> uh, you know what we can do maybe to help you achieve that. She can also point you to where. Uh, hold on one second. <coughs> Wow. Uh, she can uh, point you where to get you signed up for those uh, access to those uh, webinars as well. Now, a second thing you could do is get started with the home study system. That's a free and clear cash machine. We've actually packaged it up with the latest ultimate profit generator. If you have my free and clear deal chart training software from way back when, a couple years ago, 
um, or you have the Ultimate Profit Generator software. Well, I just created uh, version 3.0. It's got a lot of great cool features. It's incredible. Uh, me and the coaches are going to spend some training time on it tomorrow, right? Right, Mark? And, uh, yeah. I mean, there's so much in there. You know, you've seen me. You, you have copies of it. You've, bet, you've been using the kind of the, the beta version. And uh, I'm going to show you kind of the uh, all the bells and whistles I've added. Makes it really easy just to quickly input your numbers and uh, generate generate offers in minutes. Um, so that's the ultimate profit generator. So I've, we've packaged the ultimate profit generator with the free and clear cash machine and some support, and that would be at richardgroup.com slash best dash offer. richardgroup.com slash best dash offer. So this is everything you need to do it on your own. Okay, you got all the, uh, the you got the marketing tools, you got the marketing instruction, you got all the forms and contracts, you got the uh, deal structuring software, you got scripts. Um, you, we we walk you through all, all the steps of finding the deals, uh, structuring the offers, pre-screening the calls, uh, presenting offers to sellers. Uh, raising private money, occupying the houses quickly. Okay, those are the basic steps. So we walk you through all the basic steps. Plus, I give you uh, as some bonuses. I give you all a whole bunch of updates and new stuff to add to that. Add to the basics. So any at any area of the system you want to get better at, we have a library of tools and uh, and uh, audios and videos that can help you beef up any part of of your business anything related to the basics there. And then, of course, we go into advanced stuff when you're ready. But it, it's important, Mark, to get the, you know, get the basics and then just implement the basics. It's not that complicated. It's just really working the basics. Basic system, isn't it? Yep. So it is. All right. And this is our, our most successful clients are the ones that say, you know what? I just do as I'm told. <laughs> I just follow instructions. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. You don't need to do it. We've been doing this long enough. If and if you have a question, I, I, just ask. I went huh? to public. I went to public school, so that's kind of why I, I excel at this model because it's simple. <laughs> it's straightforward. All right, and you know, we 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 know all the questions that come up when we talk about this type of system, and that's why we are knocking them out with the FAQ uh, webinars, but. You know, if you have any concern or any question or any challenge uh, about, you know, why this is not going to work for you, talk, talk to Dina or, or let us know. We'll point you to the answer, okay, because answer, we have the answers. It's just a matter of where is it. Um, so that's if you want to do it on your own. We do have the option of uh, once you get the home study system, you could sign up for our uh, postcard mailing service, and we could do that for you. Um, However, we also have the uh, joint venture program. Uh, a lot of people have heard about it. I'm currently working with about 50 joint venture partners across the nation. Uh, we work. I work with them on their. Uh, we we generate the leads for them. Uh, we do all the deal structuring together using the ultimate profit generator, and we actually uh, will present the offers to the sellers. Um, we do as much as we can for you, uh, and so you can actually learn while you're closing deals. So that's the uh, Joint Venture Partner Program. You'd work directly with me. You'd also be working with Mark and Keith, our coaches, as well as the whole team. Uh, but you'll be able to jump on our schedules and book any type of uh, support that you need. Uh, if you want all the information on that, go to uh, richardroop.com slash jvkit. jvkit will get you all the details. And we've been doing that for a while, so we've done a lot of improvements and refinements that we haven't even published yet. Uh, it's just the folks are getting the benefit of it now. And over the past, uh, when we uh, recently we we kind of ran our numbers and say we're you know we're not getting the one out of ten uh, that we're used to. What can we do? So I've made improvements to the, our offers. I've raised better private money. I've in, I've created sales presentation and print tools. Um, we, we've created some very powerful seller follow-up strategies because 50% of your deals, over 50% of your deals will come in the, in the follow-up. And so we're doing a lot of things to increase our closing ratio. So instead of maybe 1 out of 15, we get it to that 1 out of 10, uh, which we're 
we're used to when it's in person. And, uh, and it's something you can expect making offers to sellers in person once you've got trained in a little bit of experience. That's kind of your goal where you're headed. Um, so, Mark, that is uh, basically what I wanted to cover. Um, I invite people to learn more by opting in for the, the webinars, the FAQ webinars we're doing. Get the home study package or go ahead and apply uh, to work with me as a, as a partner and where I will put up the uh, private money for the deals. I will, will, you're going to have a marketing plan. We're going to send out 1,000 postcards every month consistently. And then um, me and Keith right now are doing all the deal structuring with the folks. And, of course, people are getting good and they're doing it on their own. But I still like to uh, – I'm your partner, so I want to kind of you know tweak your, your UPG, your ultimate profit generator spreadsheet, a little bit. So what you know, based on the seller situation, is there something we can do to make sure that we're we're doing the best we can? It's been really effective. And um, Mark, you, I, I've been doing seller presentations. I've, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of seller presentations. And you've been doing seller presentations. Uh, we have we have a we have a, a, a done for you call handling service, so we can we can actually take the calls and then just send you the leads, and then you call them, gather a little bit more information, set an appointment to go see the house. Or you gather enough information so that we can uh, get on the, on the phone and, and knock out an ultimate profit generator uh, spreadsheet on it and construct offers together. So you can do it on your own, or you can do it with us. If you need to learn more, go ahead and do that. But, man, I can't imagine... What, what, Mark, what do you think are the reasons why people would not be interested in learning and using this model? Fear. Fear. Yeah? Fear. Fear. So ultimately, you know, when you're, not, when you're not doing something that you know would benefit you and that you know you should, oftentimes it's fear. And that could be fear of success, fear of failure. You know, there's all kinds of fears. It doesn't always have to be just the obvious ones, uh, and so, you know, we could, we could do a call on fear of success, but that might be another 90 minutes, so that's my simple answer. <laughs> well, I guess uh, my approach for overcoming that is just to try, try and give people as much information as I can for them to decide, you know, for themselves why they wouldn't do this, okay, because it's usually, it's going to be, a, it's, it's exactly what I'm doing right now with sellers. We're making presentations, presentations to sellers with our partners, and we're asking this. We're we're, con, we're constructing offers. We're presenting our offers. We're going through a sales presentation. It's pretty much all scripted in the sales presentation and print material. So we're con, just kind of going off of that, and then we can give it a copy of it to them in writing. Um, you you know, it's it's almost to the point where we can actually mail offers. But you can always want to present offers. You want to get that feedback from the seller and find out, you know, what they object to. Uh, they don't like the price. They don't agree on the value. They want more monthly income. They can't wait for their cash, you know, all these different things. So it doesn't work for everybody. But there's a lot of people I know we are the absolute best solution for them based on what they're trying to accomplish. I just talked to a seller the other day, and she wanted to sell her investment property because she, I, I think it was in California and she was in Texas or vice versa, and uh, she wanted to sell it do a 1031 exchange so she could defer her taxes and then buy another property for income. So she didn't need the cash. She liked the income, but she didn't like managing a property, um, you know, out of state. And she also didn't like the idea of paying a bunch of taxes. So we were the perfect solution. We're going to give her more than market value. We could give her the same net income she's getting right now, and she can defer her taxes uh, with the installment sale. So everything she wanted, we were, we were offering with this system. So when I find a seller like that, I, I go, okay, we're, we're, the, we're, we're definitely the best option for them, and we're usually the, op the best option for anybody who wants to go sell their house if they're in a position where they can wait a while for their money and collect 
uh, money over time and collect income on a note. Uh, if they're in a position to consider that, they should do that. Now, if they don't, I really want to know why. And uh, I want to know what their other options are. What are they going to do? They're going to keep it? They're going to list it? What are they going to do? And then we're going to discount their other options and give them some information. The reason why people do not agree to finance you on a, uh, using a, a, an investing strategy like this is number one, they don't feel comfortable with it. And number two, they don't understand it. And then another reason, obviously, is it just doesn't work for them because whatever they're, they're trying to accomplish. Uh, but the, if they don't understand it or they don't feel comfortable with it, they're going to say no. So the best thing you can do is just continually give them additional, more and more information about how it works and how they're protected and, and how they can rely on this income and, and how it works. And I just find the more information you give someone, the more comfortable they feel with it, and then they'll go forward. And of course, all along the way, you want to be finding out what's important to them, find out what they're trying to accomplish, be generally interested in them and what's important to them. And um, I, I, I say, you know, become their best friend because I love my sellers, okay? And I'm just out here to help. And they're gonna, the more you can build that rapport and that relationship, the better. So if it requires uh, several contacts over a period of time to build that up, great, okay? What, what you want to find out is if they have any questions, get those answers. So now what we're doing, Mark, is we're putting all the answers in writing we're talking to the seller uh, to find out what's important to them and cover those that we know about. And then we're going to send them all the answers along with our offers after we've discussed our offers uh, so that uh, maybe the rest of the material might cover something that they didn't voice. And so when you say people might not do this um, because of fear, I think maybe one way to overcome the fear is to uh, – answer those unanswered questions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yep. So I would agree. Other reasons is, uh, well, they've some people have tried this and didn't do it correctly and didn't get the support they needed. Now, hey, I tried this four years ago. It didn't work. Uh, we used to have trouble getting uh, leads. Remember when the market was kind of hot? Uh, yep. Yep. It, it, actually, it was the post-hot market. And in the post-hot market, in some areas like California and stuff, we weren't getting the marketing response that we uh, would like, okay? And so in some of these markets that were really hot and then were po post-hot, everybody was waiting for the market to come back before they were selling. So people just weren't responding. It wasn't the system. It was the market. And the, one of the solutions for that was change market. That, that was the solution. But now people are kind of, coming in touch with reality, and it's, it's, we have no trouble generating the leads that we, we, we need. And uh, there are a few challenging areas that we have to get a little creative on, but I would say 95% of uh, the areas that uh, we're buying houses in, uh, we're generating more leads than the uh, my, my clients have the capacity to handle. So we have to actually back off on our marketing. Um, because it does take time to close the deals as well as to uh, you know present the offers and all that. So you got to work the leads that do come in before you generate uh, additional leads. That um, I mean, we're getting people with we get 20 or 30 calls on a thousand postcards. Well, you know that's not what we expected, but that's what we're getting. And so let's go ahead and maybe break it up: 500 cards and then another 500. We don't want leads to sit around and and not be used. Uh, again, that that fear factor about what am I going to do with the leads and you know what am I going to say and all that that's all covered in the training materials. And if you're working with us at JV Partners, you're actually going to you know you're going to learn as you do all the scripts that you need. We give you, but then you can actually uh, hear us you know talking to sellers or work with us on deal structuring. Mark, a lot of when I'm working with clients, a lot of these issues that, that would hold them back do come up, and I can actually nip it in the bud. I, I, I imagine you've experienced that as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, certainly, certainly.
all the time, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a constant process. Because as yeah. coaches, we're listening for that. So we know we can pick up, hey, there's something, you know, this, this is an area um, – where they they feel uncomfortable. So I've I've recently talked to some folks and they um, they weren't confident, for example, that they could get the house occupied quickly because they never sold with they never offered terms on a house. So they they didn't think they could get that the the property occupied quickly. So that was a little bit of fear that held them back from actually buying a property. And that was because they didn't understand. They didn't get to the point they studied how to buy properties, but they didn't get to the point of you know occupying properties, which is pretty systematic and easy. The easiest way to occupy a property is to buy it right. Okay, I would never buy a property where I was relying on someone to go out and get a bank loan and cash me out because you're totally out of control. But if you buy with terms and sell with terms, you'll have no problem getting your properties occupied. And uh, it, you know, if you if you think you are going to have trouble because your market, then we'll just use a resale price lower than we sh probably should, just because terms should get it done. But if you have to, go ahead and use price and terms to get it done, because everything will sell at the right price or the right terms. And then you use both of that, you know, you can you know you won't have any trouble whatsoever. But you're probably leaving too much profit on the table when you do that. So if someone has that fear because they don't understand it, then we're going to say, you know, what we, what we usually do is give the three or five minute answer and then point them to the one hour answer, right? <laughs> you know, point them to the library because we've got a huge yep. library, right? Uh, me and you, we in fact we did uh, two great ultimate training webinars on how to sell houses with no stinking banks. So if yeah. people have questions on that, we just point them, you know, <laughs> part one is on tenant buyers, part two is on terms buyers. <laughs> there it is. Now, of course, we cover it in the basic home study collection in uh, section seven on sell selling, section seven. We give you all the paperwork, all the, the, the systems and the forms and the processes and the strategies uh, for occupying houses quickly and maximizing your cash flow. It's everything you need to know, but if you need more, we have a whole library on occupying houses. We have a whole library on the inner game. We have a whole library on uh, negotiating with sellers, structuring offers, marketing, all that. So what's great about the Joint Venture Partnership Program is people don't have to go through that all that training material. They can learn as they're doing deals and they can use it as a resource. You know, and it's a huge resource, so you're never going to get through everything. It's just when you need something, it's there. Okay, uh, so if you if you join us for the frequently uh, asked question webinars, you're going to learn more on how this strategy works, and we're going to answer some of these questions that would hold you back. And if you get the home study collection as bonuses, we're going to give you access uh, to these libraries, so you can you can burn through the free and clear cash machine. It's eight audio CDs. You could burn through it in a weekend. Okay, in one weekend. You can have the basics down. Now, of course, you're going to learn by doing, so you've got to go out there and take action. But if there's anything that you were unclear about the basics, you could review it again or review that section or go into the Inner Circle Library and tap into that category and look at the titles and see, you know, see, see what you'd like to feel more comfortable with or like to learn more about. And then we're here to support you as well. And then uh, so my joint venture partners, we just, um, you know, we do have training on deal structuring, but if we're going to do it all together, you can just learn by doing. I th I've just created this updated version, UPG 3.0, Ultimate Profit Generator. Um, the best way to learn how to do that is get on the phone with me one-on-one -on -one and let's work on a deal. <laughs> let's uh, work on one of your leads together and buy it together. And uh, my motivation is, is yeah, I want to get a profit share. I do get a profit share out of your deal, but that's actually where I make my money, you know. And so my we're working on the same end. We have the same goal, you know. We want to close four deals as quickly as possible, and uh, and mo our commitment for my partners is we want to do do that in a year, okay. But we do have people that have more aggressive goals, which is fine, if especially if you're a full-time investor. 
Um, but at this point, you know, we, we have a lot of, I, I do have a lot of partners. I stay busy with that. So any new partners, I'm, I, I would like them to have the basics down. So if you already own the free and clear cash machine or you've used the ultimate strategy or you've been an inner circle member for a while and you understand a lot of the basics, then that would be my priority preference on bringing on new partners. Um, if it's all new to you, I would suggest you, you know, take advantage of some of our free resources and uh, maybe get the home study collection because when we're working together, uh, we want to close deals right away. It may take you a month or two to get familiar with the stuff, and I'd rather you do that on your own as opposed to doing it on my time. Once you're familiar with it, I'll be happy to spend all the time in the world to, if we're working on closing deals. Now, I, my goal is to close deals. Uh, of course, our goal as a team, as a coaching team, is to help you achieve your goals, whatever they are. And, and we actually help people, Mark, uh, achieve their goals in all areas their, of their life uh, because it's really to us, it's, we don't care what your goal is as long, you're, as long as you're getting it, right? Yep, that's right. All right. Well, uh, do you know if there's any questions that were submitted during the webinar? Have you been monitoring that? I have not. Yeah, I have. I have been. And, yeah, there's, there's quite, a, quite a number of questions. Uh, I'm not sure how many of them you want to answer, um, but I can throw a few of them at, at you and you can uh, decide. We, uh, well, yeah, take a look at you? the questions and think about, you know, we won't so, be able to go, cover all. So one question that one. came up that I thought was, was you know, somewhat relevant um, has to do with, uh, with the legislation, the Dodd-Frank uh, legislation. Dodd -Frank, now, yeah. Isn't that, isn't that the, uh, what was that called? The, can't remember. There was, a, there, uh, well, was an act. there was there was a there was a previous bill before that one that everybody was saying, oh, the death of seller financing. Right. Right. Okay. Um, and I actually created a blog just on that topic. Oh my God, the, the sky is falling. Um, <laughs> so I've never worried about that stuff. Uh, but uh, and we did actually spend some time, you know, overcoming people's fears about that. Uh, but there was a there was a, an a initial law that everybody was scared about. I think that was like a couple of years ago. And then there's the Dodd Frank bill that everybody I don't know I haven't heard heard any concerns lately. So this is a new one, uh, at least recently. Um, what you got to do is when you're you can buy all the houses you want with seller financing, and those laws do not apply. Okay, those those regulations or acts or whatever. Now when you sell a house with terms, when you do owner financing, you have to follow those rules. And the rules are you have to have a licensed residential mortgage broker involved. And so that's what I do. Now, you don't have to do that with a tenant buyer or a tenant, uh, and most of the people you're going to deal with is going to be tenants and tenant buyers. But if you happen to have someone with 10 or 20 or 30 percent to put down, and you want to do wraparound financing, owner financing, then you'll want to uh, work with a residential um, um, mortgage originator, mortgage loan originator, a licensed residential mortgage loan originator. Okay, so it's just, you know, work with mortgage companies. So when I close my deals on installment land contracts, when I'm selling, I use uh, an attorney, prepares all the documents, and uh, it costs $350 to have his license broker, mortgage broker, uh, do the good faith and the truth truth in lending. I don't even do it. Um, I just pass on the cost to my, my buyer. So it's, uh, my closing cost cost me 800 bucks, um, and uh, so I just pass that on to my buyer. Buyer, hey, your closing costs are 800 bucks. So it doesn't cost me anything, and you, you just find out what you have to do to comply, and that's what I do to comply hasn't changed my business a bit, not at all. In fact, it might have weeded out some potential competition. <laughs> you know, most, most, most real estate investors, you know, didn't have a good strategy that was working for them, and they've gotten out of the business. And so a lot of investors over the past few years have gotten out of the business, and they should because they were using models that didn't work. Um, but if you're using this model, this is a 
great time to be in business. And, and if the economy turns around and whoever gets in the, the office makes a difference and everything's rosy, it's still going to be great. Because <laughs> yep. uh, a lot of what we offer, you know, we're offering, uh, one of the benefits we're offering is top dollar uh, on a house, and that's attractive to a lot of people. Um, I do know that when your market gets hot, it is uh, you do get less calls, but you when you do get calls, uh, they're better calls because they're more motivated. But it works all the time. What other questions you got? Uh, let's see. Question about your money that you provide. Uh, what loan to value do you go up to? Uh, we well um, right now uh, one of my private uh, actually a hard money lender that I first used when I. I think the first house I bought all cash, uh, Mark, was in 96. It was in 96. It was in May of 96. And I borrowed money from this guy, Don, uh, at 18% and five points. <laughs> okay, this was back in 1996. And I, and I still made a ton of money, right? Um, but that wasn't a buy and hold. That was a buy and flip. Buy, fix, and flip, right? So that was short, and that was short-term money. I think it was like one year or whatever. Um, so now recently I talked to him. We kind of got in touch. I haven't been borrowing money from him. His rates have gone down. Uh, last last I heard it was like down to 13% or 12% or something like that. And I still have better money, so I haven't been doing business with him. But I talked to him recently, and he has all of this money. He's a hard money lender, but he uses uh, he raises private money from private lenders. He gives them eight or nine percent, you know, typically, um, and then he charges more and makes the spread and makes his fees and all that. Well, he doesn't have any place to put his money these days. People are not borrowing like they used to. And so he's looking to get 8 or 9% return on his cash. And so he's actually going down the courthouse steps and buying foreclosures and renting them out to get to get an 8 or 10 to get an 8 or 9% return on his cash so he can pay, keep his uh, private lenders happy who are probably getting, I don't know, 4 or 5%. I don't know what they're getting now. So I'm going to be meeting with him over the next couple of weeks. Um, I already brought on board one of my uh, private lenders, and uh, he started at a 30% loan to value, which is uh, plenty of money to do these free and clear deals. And then recently I talked to him. I said, look, let's, let's, let's go up to 40%. It doesn't make a difference to you. You're still well protected, and it's going to make a difference for us because we can offer a little bit more money down to the seller. And so we got 40% loan to value. And then when I talked to Don, and I also have some other private investors I'm, I've already started talking to, uh, some of the ones that, for example, when I uh, sold, sold the property today, um, you know, I paid them off. I get their, get their money back. I'm starting to talk to them about, you know, I don't always have a place for all of their money. So I, I talked to them about doing these uh, JV deals for my, you know, for my partners. And... Uh, those would be even better uh, because they're they're they don't <clears throat> they don't expect any points. But <clears throat> my uh, my 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 hard money lender buddy Don he would want some points, but he he wants to get a, a pretty decent return. So I'm going to find out what he would charge and what kind of points, what kind of overall yield for this type of model. But I'm going to try and see if I can get him to 50% on the value, right? So right now we have 40%, but I'm looking to move it to 50. And that's that's good for the free and clear model. It's not good enough when you're making cash offers. So the biggest challenge that we have is if we have this $180,000 house and we offer to buy it for 100000 cash and they say yes, <laughs> right? All right. So what can I do? I can bring in 40% LTV, so 180 times... Point four is I can only bring seventy two to the table, okay? And uh, but if we bought a hundred eighty thousand dollar house, Mark, for a hundred thousand cash, that would be a deal, right? You bet. You bet. Yeah, that would be okay. awesome. <laughs> that's, that's right. So the the unfortunate awesome. part about that is now we got to go raise the hundred grand, okay? I can come up with seventy two, but either we need to get you need to bring in some private money at at a hundred. Uh, or plus plus our, our extra cash and our buy and hold costs and our repairs and all that. Um, 
you got to. I can bring in a, a first up to 40% LTV, and then you can bring in a smaller second, or you can bring in a big first. And I think um, the best option is to get the contract, get excited, go out and see if you can get it funded. That's a great reason to build your private lender program. At least start flapping your lips, and then if you know at the same time look at uh, flipping your contract. Because if you don't get it funded, you know you want to. Our, our cash offers are such that if we couldn't fund it, we could definitely flip our contract for five or ten grand on a on a bread and butter medium, you know, price home. What other questions you got? Uh, I think um, we covered most of them. We covered okay. most of them. I think we got them all. I think we got them all. Okay, well, I, I, uh, I answered you. some. I answered some, and and you answered the ones that I wanted you to bring up uh, live. And so, if you have other questions, uh, you know, go ahead and send them in uh, to us, and and we'll we'll make sure we get, we'll get the answers. Either if, if I can't answer them, I'll pass them to Richard. Or how, how do you want to handle questions, well, Richard? You no, want to go over, buddy. <laughs> it, if you have questions, you could send them to feedback at richardroop.com. That comes to me. Yeah. Um, but you might want to consider giving Dina a call. She might point you to some uh, free resources online, or if you're a member, some member resources. Um, but no, I'm I'm not offering free coaching here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to obligate you to something. Okay, good. All right. Well, that sounds no, good. no. I'm, I'm I'm committed to these uh, FAQ webinars. That's a good way to get answers. Uh, check out you know check out the library and check out the the ones we have upcoming. Sign up for that. Register for that. Um, if you're a member, you'll be able to access access that stuff when you log in. But if you're not a member, go ahead and sign up for uh, free. And because these these particular series of uh, support, uh, I'd like to get out to people that have any questions uh, um, about the uh, free and clear model that that might be holding them back and that might might get them into a position so they're actually excited to go out there and start using this because most of our uh, people that we're working with have uh, have have done investing in the past they might have taken a break because you know the market changed and every, everything and now they're they're kind of coming on board and and uh, realizing they have to focus in on this strategy there's a lot of people out there that are selling books and tapes and courses and seminars and stuff like that and the, and the crap just doesn't work and it, or it doesn't work as promised and um, so a lot of people have gotten fed up with that, and that would be another reason why people wouldn't move forward on this, is because uh, they just don't, you know, they don't want to put any more hope in something, and then they have their hopes, you know, just you know, wiped out or whatever. You know, they don't want to be disappointed again. I've been there. I bought stuff. I bought good stuff, and I bought bad stuff, you know. Yeah. And um, I've been ripped off. <laughs> I won't mention any names. <laughs> but I, I, we all have huge libraries. <laughs> some of it is crap, and some of it is good. And some of it you might even want to go back and and uh, look at again, especially the stuff that is everlasting. You know, such as you know uh, uh, negotiations and communication and uh, goal setting and uh, time management. There's a lot of good stuff that you might have on your library that would be good to kind of tap into but what you need is an investing model an investing strategy that uh, th that is very systematic that you can commit five to ten hours a week just working on this strategy okay five to ten hours a week uh, if you do that it'll take a little bit of time to get up to snuff but once you're up to snuff you just working five to ten hours a week you could be closing deals every quarter every three months and if if you have more time than that, and you're you're excited, and you're motivated, and you want to, and maybe you have a partner or some someone helping you out, you know, you can you can push it further. It, there are no unrealistic goals. There's only unrealistic time frames. And this model, um, with all of especially with all the stuff Mark that we've created over the past three or four months to make it even easier to close deals, um, there's never been a, a a better time to get started. And if you've uh, tried, and I started talking about this before, when you try, if you tried it in the past and you weren't able to get enough leads, well, we've solved that problem. The market has changed. I've improved my postcard. 
we've improved our, our uh, the lists that we go after. We used to get lists that weren't as good as what we get now. Um, postcards pretty much always been good, but I've improved the postcard for the free and clear model. Um, yep. So you you remember when we used to have trouble getting leads, right? Yeah. Yep. It was. Remember it Willie? That was. Willie was saying yeah. that was our biggest problem. People weren't getting enough right. leads, but we we yep. fixed that. Yeah, we sure did. People are complaining now that they have too many. I know. <laughs> too many. I mean, really, I we're getting that complaint. I got I got 60 calls. What am I supposed to do? I got 80 calls. I know. Well, I know. I know. But we don't know until we send out 1,000 postcards. Right. And it's a good problem to have. It is. It's not a bad problem. It, not it, and all we do is all we do is we just we just back off our, our marketing. We speed yeah. it up. Right. Or, you know, or... Um, or you know, or we can tighten up the criteria, but typically we just we don't we don't send out as many postcards. You know, we spend less on marketing. You only have to spend you you only need enough leads that you can handle, not more than enough. <laughs> and and what's great about postcards is you can turn it on and turn it off anytime you want. My partners are pretty much committed to mail a thousand postcards a month, uh, but that's uh. You know, we back that off if, if if they have if they have plenty of leads because the only purpose of that is we know that you have to consistently get those leads coming in, and you've got to get the marketing out. The number one reason why people are stopped is they don't get their marketing out. So we with the joint venture program, since it's required, we we handle that. And if they're getting more than they hand they can handle, then we back that off. That's 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 a good problem. The other thing that prevents people is they say, I don't have any private money. Well, I would say go to this uh, this uh, webinar replay that I just did, and it's like, how does it work without private money? That would I think that's one of the most common things is, you know, they don't have private money, so they can't do it. Well, number one, if you want to do it with me, you can use my private money. Number two, in that webinar, uh, I answer about, you know, five or six other ways to fund these deals. Um, if you don't have private money right now. So, okay. Let's see. What else holds people back? Uh, fear, like you said. Um, and uh, no, no, no commitment. Some people are just not, uh, I don't know. There's, some people are comfortable, you know. So we do attract a lot of, you know, kind of wealthy, well-to-do, well, well -to -do, uh, successful people. Um and but sometimes people are just so comfortable they really don't need you know to collect ten or twenty or thirty thousand next month, and they don't you know they don't have the motivation. So in that case, as a coach, I, I know you've probably experienced that you have to feel, find out what <laughs> you got to give them some goals to work on that are important to them. You know, right. how would you like to make the same money in half the time? What are you going to do with the other half of your time, right? So it's either more money or more time, and really, to me, money is about time freedom. That's that's what it's about to me. Of course, you know, I work my ass off, you know, sharing this information be just because I love it. <laughs> and I buy and sell houses. That's that's not as much of a challenge, but it's good money. <laughs> it's a good part-time job. <laughs> So I this is you know I teach what I do and I get the benefit when I make all these create all these new tools like the sales presentation in print and the ultimate profit generator uh, improvements and the new version and and all that this uh, the done for you services I mean I get the benefit of all that so um, I'm just uh, I'm in the process of hiring a virtual assistant another assistant so I can kind of do do more uh, real estate deals because I spend all my time you know, creating this stuff for you guys um, and then doing my joint venture partner calls all, every day. Every day I have uh, six to eight appointments with my partners. So I have six to eight calls every day with my partners. And uh, as a partner, uh, you can talk to me uh, as often as you need, okay? If, if we're working on deals, we're working together. Now, I, of course, fortunately I have a team so if it's something I don't have to personally do, someone else can help you with, we're going to do that. But I spend my entire day uh, on, on a schedule. I block out all the important stuff from my real estate business personally, 
and for my family, and then everything else that's left, I leave open for my partners to book their own time with me. So I, I come in the morning, I go to my schedule, I get some stuff done before you know the office opens up, before people come in, but then uh, the day, I'm just executing my schedule. I have all this important stuff on my schedule. And we've talked about this recently, Mark, about time management, and it's really don't think during the week. You know, do some planning, and then just during the week, you just you execute. You get the most important things on your schedule, and you know that those things are going to move you towards your goals, and then you knock those out. And you don't you, you leave some slack time for the things that are unexpected, but that's kind of a basic overview of um, time management. And uh, and I like I like being productive. Productive productivity makes me happy. You know, helping buyers, helping sellers, helping my partners, helping my members, help, helping my uh, my fans. Hey, I got some fans, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm one of your fans. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right. Anything else before we go tonight? Uh, no, I don't word? think so. I think we covered it all. I think we did. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us this month for the Ultimate Training Webinar. Actually, this month we actually opened it up uh, to non-members because of the nature of the subject. You know, covering this model in kind of a, oh, kind of a well-covered, you know, overview. I think uh, we'll also. I'll go ahead and put a, a copy of this report. This is basic, uh, basically an article I recently wrote. So I'll get a copy of that. that. Actually, that is online. That, that's the member site. You can find that. That should be unlocked. But we'll get a link on the replay page. So on the re replay page, wherever you found this video, there should be some links to uh, an article, uh, how to make $72,000 uh, buying a house above market, um, how to get involved with the frequently asked question uh, webinar replays and upcoming webinars as free, uh, our best a best offer on the home study package, whatever we've packaged up, it will be our best offer. And then um, the Joint Venture Partnership Program. It's always evolving and growing and improving. But at this point, um, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get a little picky and I'm, I'm starting to require people have a little bit more uh, education under their belt before, you know, we're spending a lot of time on, on the phone. And I think that, that that's only about 30 days, 60 days, you know, 30 or 60 days, uh, understand, getting familiar with the stuff. And if you're already familiar, great, let's talk. Let's, let's talk about being partners. But otherwise, I'd get the home study, start there, or um, sign up as an inner circle member and, uh, you know, tap into the libraries. I still think you have, need the basics. But if you tap into the inner circle libraries and then you become a partner, you can learn by doing it. Would you agree, Mark? That's not really all they need. They had access to the inner circle libraries for a month or two, right? And they studied some of that? As long as they do the work. As long as they do the work. Well, they could start doing the work, you know, when they... You what know, I mean is, you know, having access, you. just having access isn't... Oh, yeah. no, no. It's not, no. It's not like, uh, you know, no, you've got osmosis. To you actually have to yeah. research it and study it. Yeah, fortunately, most of the people listening to us have enough education from me where they're ready, okay? But if you're new, I would go ahead and consume all the free stuff that's available to you. Then go ahead and I would just sign up as an inner circle for a month or two and just study the library. You're going to love the stuff. It's great stuff. You can pick and choose the topic. And then when you're ready, let's talk about being partners and at that point, you are going to be into action. So if you're not into action on your own ahead of time, you will be into action <laughs> instantly because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a marketing plan review. I'm going to uh, research your list. I'm going to pull your list for you. And I'm going to uh, – actually, Melinda is going to uh, customize your postcard for you. <laughs> <Not me. laughs> but I'll get the information. We'll talk about your call handling, your website. I have a done-for-you website. Uh, we'll get you – we're going to quickly, as soon as you're ready – we're going to get your phone ringing, and you're going to have leads coming in by calls and emails. We can do done for uh, you know we can we can ha handle the incoming calls for you if you want that done for you. But basically, you're going to get the leads, and once you have the leads, you're in the action. 
So again, in the past, we would I would spend you know I would do a four day boot camp and I'd spend a whole day teaching you how to market, right? And then we would be lucky if people you know got their marketing out sooner than you know four months <laughs> because they go home and they get you know they get lost in their normal life and they don't get their marketing out. So screw it, I'm not going to teach you how to do marketing. I'm just going to do it for you. <laughs> now the leads are coming in, right? Now you're forced into action. And what do you do when you got a lead? Okay, you gather the information we need to start your offers, which are about six things. What is the after repair value? What is the market rent? What are the repairs? What are the taxes? What are the insurance? And what are the homeowners dues? That's it. That's all I need. Give me that. Now, if you don't have that, there's a tab right in the Ultimate Profit Generator. It's called Research. And there's about 50 links <laughs> where you can research the property and the market rent and determine all that. And then I'm going to show you a very simple strategy for determining that, that information even faster. But you got a tool right there. And then the, the taxes and the insurance, you know, we just, you know, you can look up the taxes, you can ask the seller, you can, uh, or you can use a, a ballpark. I even have formulas, uh, if you didn't know, but that are right in the software. But basically, that, that's just six numbers. Once we have that, that's all we need. I don't care what the seller's... Uh, situation is. I don't care uh, what their motivation is. I don't care what their hot buttons are. It doesn't matter. Uh, I don't care what they're asking. I, if I have the numbers, then the, the numbers are going to determine what we can offer. Now, we're going to offer them short-term, long-term. We're going to offer no money down, a lot of money down. We're going to offer them little income, a lot of income. We're going to let them pick. Now, of course, now after I've structured the offers, now, I want to know, okay, do they really need any cash or what is their situation? At that point, I do want to know. But to structure the offers, you, it does, to start, you don't, it, it doesn't care. Software doesn't care. Because there's no, there's no place in there where it calculates your offers based on what they're asking. <laughs> you know, based on the price they're asking. But once we've constructed our offers, if I know they need a bunch of cash, then we'll focus in on the highest cash offers. If I know that they're, you know, 95 years old, we'll focus on the nine-year terms instead of the 15-year terms. You know, yeah. If I know they're unrealistic on what they think the property is worth, we might offer start with 20-year offers and then 15-year offers. So we're starting with their, you know, the prices that make sense for them. Have you ever talked to a seller, Mark, who was unrealistic on the value of their property? Yeah, once or twice. Once yeah, or twice. once or twice. <laughs> So the truth is, we can pay whatever the seller wants. The only question is when. <laughs> sure. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Mark. I really appreciate you hanging out with me and joining me and, um, you know, keeping me on track and uh, your input and, uh, of course, your uh, incredible dedication to the success of our clients. You bet. You bet, Richard. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be anywhere else. This is exactly where I want to be. So thank you very much. And and uh, uh, really, uh, really, Richard, you go above and beyond all the time for your clients. So so keep it up. Appreciate uh, working with you. And and uh, it's definitely a lot of fun. All right. I appreciate you. I appreciate uh, the other members on our team. I appreciate all my current JV partners. That's what uh, keeps me going every day. And all of uh, all of our other members and supporters, if you're interested in making money in real estate, um, you're looking for something that uh, is uh, proven, consistent, systematic. Uh, check this out. Uh, let us support you. Uh, that's what we're here for. Um, put aside any doubts of about what you've done in the past and and uh, why it didn't work and can it really work for you, or does it work in your market? You know, um, just gather more information. Talk to us. Let us let us know. If, if but if you want to, you know, if you want your own business, we treat this as a business. If you want to have the option of keeping your job or not, or changing your career or not, okay, um, this this can totally uh, be your income stream for all that you do. Now, if you love your work and you want to do that work, that's great. That's fine. You can do this part-time, or you can gravitate, get to the point where you're doing this all the time. Because this is a very fun and exciting business when you're doing it right. And if you're doing it wrong, then we're going to help you do it right. 
So thanks, everybody, for joining us for the Ultimate Training Webinar. This is Richard Roop. Uh, go to the replay page for some links on uh, the free information and the home study and information on the partnership and how to contact us, and we'd be glad to help you achieve your goals. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Mark. Good night, everybody. Yep. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.